Welcome back to the workflow clip and today I want to talk about what you can do to become a faster animator. Tip number one, the first thing you got to do is have a plan. I know this sounds kind of boring. Maybe you're waiting for like a specific, this is the tool and you're going to be 100% faster. But the thing is, nothing matters. The tools don't matter. The rigs don't matter. I mean, obviously they do, but in a different way. But if you don't have a plan, if you don't know what you want to do, then your animation is going to suffer. You're going to meander and you're going to waste a bunch of time. And since this is about speed and workflow, you need to find ways to animate faster. And you will always be a faster animator when you know what you want to do. Case in point, let's say you animate something, your software crashes and you got to start over. You're going to be faster. Why? Because you've done it already, you know what you want to do, and you're just going through the list. So before you do anything, before you do anything that I mentioned in this clip, you have to have a plan. Think about your shot, film reference, act things out, draw thumbnails, whatever your process is, but you got to have a clear idea of what you're going to do. Otherwise, you're just going to try things out and get lost and noodle things around, and that's a waste of time. And don't feel bad if your schedule is 50% planning and 50% animating. You're just going to be faster if you have a solid plan. Tip number two, test your rig to avoid surprises. There's nothing more frustrating when you you do have a plan and you start and then halfway through you realize the rig can't do what I want it to do and you have to find workarounds again that waste time or worst case you have to scrap the shot and start new within your rig so make sure that you take your rig test out the movements test out the controls and the best thing you can do is to take the shot that you want to do and write down what are the extreme poses what is the body doing at its extreme what is the face doing at its extreme and pose that up so just do a couple of poses fully polished I know this might take time but trust me it's going to save you time down the line because you won't have any surprises. So polish it up, test everything out, the facial controls, the body, so you know, oh, the range of my clip is from a one to 10, whatever, and you can actually pose out all the way to 10. Tip number three, use libraries, scripts, or tools to avoid repetitive tasks. So you do something over, over, and over, that takes time. And that's what we're focusing on to spend less time. So it's great to have a pose library, for instance, for the face or hands, for finger poses, especially fingers, because posing fingers out, that's very time consuming. So either you have that that's provided through the rig or before you start, you go what I do into the minus, minus one, two, three, or whatever in your scene. And I do basic hand poses, whatever you need. Then you can just copy paste that pose for faster blocking. Same thing for mouth shapes and a body picker. So instead of going through and tumbling through your scene and trying to find the controllers, a body picker is going to save you a bunch of time. Now, tools and scripts is a topic I want to revisit later on because that is massive. That being said, all the tools in the world are not going to help you if you don't have a plan and if you have a specific work ethic that I'm going to cover later on. And the other thing is you also don't want to rely too much on these tools, even though they're great, because what if they break? What if the studio you're at doesn't have those tools? What if you at home suddenly don't have those tools? You need to be able to be a fast animator without all that extra help. If you have it, even better. But you need to have the basics and the foundation ready. And a big part of that is blocking. So tip number four, focus on the storytelling, not the details. So you got to block out the right way. And I definitely have a lot of thoughts about blocking. I did a whole series about this. This is super important. It's probably the major issues that students struggle with when it comes to showing their work and going through the process of animating. So definitely check out that whole series. But the main part is in your blocking that your blocking is clear. It tells a story, but don't waste time on the details. So if a shot is mostly about body mechanics, then you don't really have to worry about mouth details and lip sync. Now, if there is lip sync in your shot, you can still block out the whole thing and don't really worry about the details. Just do the major jaw movement so it tells the story and have basic facial expressions so we know what is going on emotionally with the character. Make sure that blocking is structured and organized so that you can make broad changes. Because you do your shot, you show it to someone, you're going to get notes. And you want to be able to just take a chunk, delete it, incorporate those notes, plug that in, and then move on. Because if you have something where you need to incorporate a note and you change your animation and that unravels everything and your animation becomes a huge mess, that's a huge time waster. Tip number five, make a list of notes to stay focused. The other trap that you can fall into that wastes a lot of time is just to watch your play blast or whatever animation software you use to watch your clip and just kind of sit there and look at it and just kind of focus on one thing, maybe that, and you get kind of lost. Like, ah, it's going to watch this and maybe I'll figure some stuff out. Huge time waster. What helps me a ton is I look at the play blast and either you draw on the play blast or you open up a separate app or software, whatever, and make a list. Now, the list itself is important too. Don't start going, well, I gotta tweak the pinky on frame 17. Make sure that you address the major points first. Is the shot working generally? Now, if you're showing this to a teacher or someone, obviously you're gonna have help with that. But generally you need to look at, is the story clear? Is the emotion reading? All the bigger parts. Because again, if that is not working, you're gonna have to make major changes and sweeping changes 
changes to your animation. And you need to be ready for that. So look at the big picture first. Are the major story points clear? And once that is addressed, then you can go down into the nitty gritty of the body mechanics. So you look at the root first. If you change anything in the root, it's going to change the whole character. So don't focus again on like fingers first. So start taking notes of the root, the chest, the head and arms, and then go into details. But focus on what breaks the shot. Is there a pop? Is the arc horrible? Is the pose not reading? So go big first and then go small, but write it down, address that, make another play blast, check it again, make a new list of notes and then continue. All of this will keep you on track and will help you to not waste time. Now, when it comes to notes, of course, there's a difference between getting notes from your supervisor, your client, whatever it is, and you work on your own shot and making your own list. Just know that when you're at work, your notes are going to be focused, hopefully. But you're going to have very specific direction to get the shot done because you're working for someone. So there is a distinction in terms of notes. But trust me, as you work on your own by yourself, you will get better at identifying what's wrong with your shot and you will develop your own critical eye and be able to make notes that matter and kind of disregard what's kind of the detail and the fluffy stuff. Tip number six, work in chunks so you're not overwhelmed. And by chunks, I mean beats or whatever you want to call this. Well, let's say you have a shot that's 10 seconds long. Hopefully it's not that long. But sometimes you have a shot and there's so much to do. You're overwhelmed. And even that approaching this and what are you going to fix first can be huge time wasted because you're just sitting there going, what What can I do? So what helps me are two things. So in terms of chunks, either you look at a beat. So is the character performing a specific action? This could be one beat. Is the character reacting to something? This could be another beat. Look at elements in the shot where you can divide it up and then you can attack this section and then the next section and so on. And if everything is kind of flowing together and it's kind of one long big beat, then maybe just attack it every 50 frames and the next 50 frames and so on and so on. Maybe just 10 frames or 20, but break it down into separate manageable parts so you're not overwhelmed. You can stay focused and again, use the trick of at notes, be structured in your notes and the combination of the note taking list and working in chunks is a huge time saver. If you're a student and you realize that I don't have time to finish my exercise, look at what is the main action of the shot. Let's say you do a weight assignment. Well, just lifting the weight, that's the main thing. You got to portray weight. So how the character gets to the object less important. What the character is doing after the character lifted the weight also less important. So you can start with the main focus. And if you have time, you can go backwards and forwards and add more. Tip number seven, avoid distractions. Because all of this sounds great, but if someone's constantly coming to your office or if it's really loud, or there's a bunch of stuff on your phone, notifications, all of that are distractions that are going to interrupt your flow. And again, add time that you don't have. So if you're working at a company or at home, close your browsers, put your phone on airplane mode, put on noise canceling headphones. If you're in an office, close the door or put on some music. Now this might be distracting, but for me, it helps to stay focused on the shot. Some action music, some classical music, some sad music, whatever gets me in the mood to animate. But sometimes either with two headphones or with speakers that can also keep you focused and drown out what's going on out there. Tip number eight, stay healthy. Because again, all of that sounds great. But if you are in pain, fingers, elbows, the back, the neck, however you're, you know, like you're maybe you're animating <laughs> like this, like Gollum, that's going to slow you down too, because you're going to need to take more breaks. You're in pain, you're slower. So also take care of your body. Because that whole list is going to mean that you're going to be focused and working, you know, very concentrated and a lot. And the downside of that is that you might forget your health, physical health or mental health. And then slowly over the weeks and months and years, it's going to take a toll on your body and you're going to start breaking down. That sounds very dramatic. It's not like, like Donovan, but you will get older if you have a longer lasting career and it's going to get harder to find the energy to work on shots and follow that list and always have the right energy to get the shots done. So all of that goes hand in hand. You have a great list to work in terms of a plan and your tools and everything. But one of the bigger tools you have is yourself or your fingers, your eyes. So take care of yourself so that you can have a long lasting career. I know that's a very broader comment in terms of speed, but it's really something you want to pay attention to because like I said, all of that doesn't matter if your fingers are in pain all the time and you can barely animate. You're going to be slow and it's going to waste time and your career is going to go down the drain. That being said, it's also subjective. This has helped me a bunch, but of course you might have different tips. So feel free to comment. Let me know what your tips are. Maybe I'll see something new that would be great and I can expand that on maybe a part two or something. But this list has helped me a ton and I've been working for quite some time. So take that list and start with that. Again, make modifications, do whatever you need to do to be a faster animator on your own, but at least try this, try this as a starting point. But some things are really not negotiable. Like you need to have a plan. You need to take care of yourself. Tools are extra helpful. I mean, these are to me the basic foundational blocks of having a fast workflow. But don't get me wrong. I do love tools and scripts and stuff like that. So watch out for your future part. Speaking of future, if you feel like in the future, you want to do something really cool with your 
your shots and you need help, you know what the pitch is. I have workshops you can sign up at any time. Let me know, I can work with you. I can make your shots even more awesome. Incorporate all of these tips and more and help you become a better animator. That's like so, that's so pitchy, but it is a pitch. But if you wanna know more, there's a link in the description with all the information, let me know. You can sign up at any time. The workshops are always open. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you feel like that's kind of cool, I don't wanna miss the next upload, then subscribe and hit the bell button so you won't miss any of the uploads. That is that on my end. I'm done with all the pitching. So thank you, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next upload.